I was a pregnant hobo, but found my husband in a trash pile. He opened his eyes and instantly covered his nose. I admit I didn't smell my best. I'd been hanging out in basements and landfills for a month. The guy wanted to get up, but the doctor told him not to. Your girlfriend saved your life, said Doc and gave him a sedative. My what? He cried, pointing a finger at me before blacking out. I'd found him unconscious in a dumpster and lied to doctors I was his girlfriend. Hi all, my name's Alice and I'm 25. My parents died in a car crash and the bank repossessed my home. That's how I ended up on the street where I lived for a whole year. But everything changed with one dirty slice of pizza. That day, I saw a guy taking a pizza box out. A leftover slice was sticking out of it and beckoning to me. It had been ages since I had fresh, tasty pizza. I followed the guy to pick up the box, but then he collapsed. I ran up to him and checked his pulse. It was barely there. I started doing CPR and mouth to mouth like my late mom had taught me. She used to be a nurse. Someone called an ambulance. And in 10 minutes, I was off to the hospital with the poor guy, cause I was his girlfriend. At least that's what I said to the surprised doctor so I could stay in the hospital for warmth. I spent the night at the hospital. It was warm there, plus they had free vending machine coffee. The next morning, they woke me up and kicked me back out on the street. Turned out, Tom had left at dawn and told the staff I wasn't his girlfriend. I wasn't mad. At least I warmed up and got some decent sleep. A day later, I saw Tom again. I said hi, but he yelled at me. Turned out that morning, his fiance came to see him at the hospital and she was told Tom had been saved by his girlfriend who was waiting for him in the hall. Layla, that was Tom's fiance's name, saw me and walked out on him cause Tom had hooked up with a filthy hobo. So ungrateful. The least you could do is buy me coffee. I shouted to Tom. I saved your life. Ungrateful for what? You ruined my wedding. My fiance thinks I'm a bum. He left and I cried. No one had called me a bum to my face before. I'm as human as everyone else. The only difference is that two months ago, a car crash took my parents, the bank took my home, and my bestie stole my boyfriend. I thought I had no one left in the whole world, but I was wrong. A pregnancy test I'd been given in a shelter insisted I wasn't alone. Not alone anymore, but it scared the heck out of me. What could I, a tramp, offer a baby? I didn't want to go to the baby's dad, my ex. He was already married. Abortion was my only option. I found a charity center that helped the poor with family planning and covering bills for medical procedures. They heard me out and gave me a paper with an address and a date. The day before the procedure, I went to a church to get warm. It was one of those places where they didn't kick me out. I came in just as the children's choir was singing. Their prayer song made me cry. Mom used to sing it to me when I was little. When she was pregnant with me, she'd gotten seriously ill. She could have lost me. But every night, she sang this prayer and hoped God would hear her. And he did. And there I was, in a church, preparing to get rid of my child, listening to the song my mom had pleaded for my life with. I took out the paper with the address and left it on the bench. I didn't know what to do next, but I knew exactly what not to do. Four months later, I saw Tom outside the store. He was surprised by my baby bump and came up to me. You got a name? He asked. You must be cold. Come with me. I've got coffee. Tom offered me a shower and gave me his clothes. We sat down to dinner. He didn't ask me about my pregnancy. I assumed he didn't want to pry. Thanks for saving my life, Tom finally spoke. I didn't respond, but felt a sense of pride. Tom told me he'd tried to make up with Layla all that time, but she wouldn't budge. And that's when Layla showed up. So you and the bum are already having a baby. How splendid. And I was thinking to mend fences. She yelled and slammed the door. Tom ran after her, but couldn't get her to come back. I realized I was the third wheel here. I'd better leave, I said, heading for the door. You still here? Tom blew his lid. What was I thinking, bringing you here in the first place? These words hurt my feelings, because I kinda had a crush on Tom and had foolish hopes about him. 
Alice, get him out of your head. You're just a tramp. But I couldn't forget Tom. Five months later, when I went into labor, I banged on his door in the middle of the night. And half an hour later, he was rushing me to hospital in his car. I had a baby girl, the most beautiful and unfortunate girl. I cried with joy and despair. I'm gonna keep you, my sweet little girl, I whispered to her. I gave you life, and that's all I have. Tom visited me all the time after the birth. He paid all my medical bills. I couldn't look him in the eye out of shame when he'd come. I ruined your love life, I'd say. You should have left me in the hospital. But Tom was just silent. And then he led Layla by the hand right into my ward. I felt gutted. I figured they'd made up. But Tom pushed her in my direction and shouted, She has nothing and still had a baby. You've got it all, but you don't want to bring a new life to this world? While well, Alice gave birth living on the street. I couldn't understand what was going on. But Tom explained. He saw Layla in the hospital earlier that day. She wanted to have an abortion. I don't know who's the father, but it doesn't matter now, Tom said to Layla. You just proved you're incapable of building a happy family with anyone. But now I know who I want to see by my side. And that's how I found my home and husband. If you liked my story, let me know in the comments. And tell us what stories you'd like to see on our pages. See you later.